Shalom, everyone. It's time for Ancient Jewish Wisdom for a Modern World that will change your thinking and change your life. Welcome to the Dust of the Rabbi podcast with Rabbi Brian Baruch Belechi. Shalom, everyone. This is Rabbi Brian, and I'm so glad you've joined us for another episode of the Dust of the Rabbi podcast. We are on episode number 12 of our third season, and we've been talking about how to pray, how to pray like a patriarch of Israel, how to pray like a prophet of Israel. And last week, we talked about how to pray like a king, King David. And that was a wonderful episode, episode 11, to talk about how to pray. And I filmed it on a day it was raining. And even today, it's been raining off and on for the last couple of days. And it's so awesome to have a wonderful cup of tea to comfort you during this season. My little sip there goes a long way. And I love to drink herbal tea and really get into the presence of the Lord on a day where I'm working from home. And today is one of those days where I'm working from home. And I'm getting ready for the Sabbath to begin this evening. And my challah bread is already made. Come on, somebody say challah. We always get prepared for the Sabbath by making our challah in the daytime and letting it rise. And just as we prepare the bread and we prepare for the Sabbath, we love to prepare for the presence of God. Today, I want to talk about how to pray like a disciple. You heard me, how to pray like a disciple. Now you say, well, you talk about discipleship a lot, Rabbi. And this is the funny thing about my mission and my calling. Just like the Apostle Paul taught us how to pray for the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened, the eyes of our heart to be illuminated through the spirit of wisdom that the Father of glory gives to each and every one of us so we can have a greater knowledge of who Yeshua is as our Messiah. I believe today I'm praying for you, both those that are Jewish, those that are not Jewish, those that really consider themselves Gentile and not a part of Israel's commonwealth, Well, in Messiah, we're all a part of the commonwealth of Israel. We're all a part of that covenant community because we're all Abraham's children. We are praying like the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We're praying like the prophets, like Isaiah and Jeremiah and Daniel and all of the prophets in the Hebrew scriptures that knew how to pray. We're praying like Yeshua, our Messiah. And specifically today, we want to pray like a disciple of Yeshua, a disciple of a rabbi, and we want to get dusty from the dust of the rabbi. The reason I talk about discipleship so much is because I feel my mission is to fulfill the great commission of Matthew chapter 28. I believe that when Yeshua said, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, The Greek term used in the Greek translation there in Matthew's gospel is ethnos, which means ethnic groups of people. And I really believe just as the Jewish people were called to bring Messiah to the world, to bring us the word of God, to give us the Torah, the prophets, and the writings of the Hebrew scriptures, the Tanakh, what many call the Old Testament, I believe even in the New Testament, the New Covenant Scriptures, the Apostolic Scriptures, these apostles that were sent out into the world, they had to first become disciples of Yeshua, then they could become sent apostles on a mission to fulfill the Great Commission. And if you are listening today, and if you are downloading ancient Jewish wisdom, I want to provoke your spirit man, your inner man, to a new level of prayer. I want to encourage you to take on spiritual disciplines. You know, I'm writing a book right now called Discipled from the Dust, and it's all based upon this journey I've been going through, where I've been helping my messianic synagogue, as well as Christian churches like Destiny Church, helping them not only learn how to pray, but how to be disciplined in prayer, how to be disciplined in reading the Word of God and learning the Word of God as a learner, as a disciple, how to be a giver of time, talent, and treasure, give of oneself to the Lord, how to really be not only just a follower, but a fully devoted disciple of Yeshua that can be used as not only an intercessor and a worshiper, but also an overcomer to know how to overcome and be a truth seeker and be a disciple maker, someone that knows how to be a peacemaker between people that are not feeling peace or people that are having a disconnect between them and their creator. You know, it's important for us to be disciple makers. It's important for us to be discipled so we can make disciples. 
So if you're listening today and you're downloading this ancient Jewish wisdom and you're listening to this messianic rabbi, yes, I am a messianic rabbi. I'm like a rabbi that you've probably never met before, one of Italian Jewish heritage from Sicily, one who has Ashkenazi Jewish blood. I'm married to a Sephardic Puerto Rican Jew, and I am so grateful to be in this movement. I'm trying to be a bridge between Jews and Gentiles. I'm trying to be a bridge between believers and unbelievers. I'm trying to be a bridge between people of different ages and stages of life, the oldest, wisest scholar and the youngest, most innocent child to be able to speak life into them, to pray blessing over them, to be a disciple maker. And I believe that discipleship is more than a program. It's a way of life. To be discipled is to learn to be disciplined. And in this book I'm writing called Disciple from the Dust, I have a subtitle that might speak to you. It's called Ancient Spiritual Strategies for an Undisciplined Life. Are you listening today thinking to yourself, wow, Rabbi Brian is talking about prayer. He's talking about being disciplined in prayer. He's talking about being a disciple of Yeshua. He's talking about being discipled of a rabbi. Even like the name of this podcast, to be dusty from the dust of the rabbi and to drink in the words of the Messiah with thirst. Just like it says in Mishnah 1-4, Pirkei Avot, the ethics of the fathers in the Talmud. It is so important that we not only understand that if this is kind of causing us to feel frustrated inside, it's probably because there's areas of our life that are undisciplined. What area of your life is undisciplined? I'll show you the area of your life that's undisciplined when I show you the area of the strategy you haven't learned. In other words, today there's a strategy of prayer that we're going to download. And you know that last week when we talked about David as not only the king of Israel, but as a psalmist and a prayer warrior, he stood up in front of all of Israel as the writings of First Chronicles tells us, chapter 29, 10 through at least verse 16. We read about how David stood and said, Baruch atah blessed are you, O Lord. And he said, you are Elohe Israel." You are the God of Israel. And he called him Avinu, our father. And that sounded just like the words that we hinted to last week that we can talk a little more about this week in the disciples prayer, what's called the Lord's prayer by most in Matthew chapter six. So today I wanna actually back up and read a couple things. I have a couple things that are tools of mine. I have my Sephardic prayer book, and we talked about that last few weeks, how important it is to see how Israel and the Jewish sages have taught us how to pray, as well as my Hebrew English Bible that I got in Israel on one of my first trips. And out of four trips, I wish I was going this year, but uh, they got canceled due to October 7th. But don't worry, we'll go again soon. But this Bible gives me the older and newer testaments. Look what it says. It says Sefer Habritot, which means the book of the covenants, both old and new. And of course, I've got my Tree of Life version that I love using so much on Shabbat. Because in the synagogue, we either read from the complete Jewish Bible, but mostly we've been reading a lot from the Tree of Life. And this has a contribution from a lot of our Messianic rabbis in the movement, especially the Messianic. Jewish Alliance of America, MJAA, and the UMJC. Wonderful rabbis. I've been a part of both movements. I'm still kind of a part of both movements. And I'm excited. Just this week, I'm going to be at the MJAA Southwest Regional Conference, the Yeshua Conference for 2024. And I'm excited to teach on a subject that's so dear to my heart. It's on how to disciple this generation. So I want you to be thinking, if you're listening right now, and you're thinking, you're talking to me, Rabbi. I feel like I'm undisciplined in prayer. I want to read a scripture to you I really believe will speak to your heart. And it comes from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 6. And I love reading out of a physical Bible. You know, we live in a world where everything is technology. And while I love technology, and I'm using technology right now to speak to you, I really believe that we need to get away from all of the technology. Just like we do on Shabbat, we try to shut down and unplug and really go into the very cleft of the rock, the very presence of God, the Shekinah glory behind the veil. We want to go into the Holy of Holies, in the secret place of the Most High, under the shadow of the Almighty, and hear the voice of God. I want you to hear the voice of God today. May this episode inspire you to pray more fervently 
and actually read the word of God more richly. Before I go into Matthew 6, 9 through 13, I want to back up to verse number 5. It says, when you pray, notice it says, when you pray, not if you pray. Yeshua was expecting his disciples to pray, regardless if they were very skilled or disciplined in it. Yet, he says, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. Who are the hypocrites? He's talking about some of the Pharisees. Boy, I'd love to break down that there were considered to be seven types of Pharisees in the first century. And just like John's revelation in the book of Revelation talks about two churches that did not receive a rebuke, or two synagogues, congregations that didn't have a rebuke out of seven. There were two types of Pharisees that actually did the commandments of God out of either love for God as the highest level, or at least the fear of the Lord, which is the respect for God on a next level. So when you think about hypocrites, think about the other five type of Pharisees that the Talmud talks about that really speak to the first century and Yeshua's critics. It was those people he was talking to, those that would say one thing, teach one thing, and do another. So here's Yeshua's teaching on prayer. He says, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners so that they may be seen of others. Now what you need to understand is that as far as someone praying to the God of Israel, there were two major places where you could pray in a corporate setting. That was the temple in Jerusalem on the Temple Mount, or in a local synagogue in whatever city you lived in. And so we know that Yeshua, Jesus, went to all the local synagogues in the Galilee, including those in the surrounding regions of Israel, wherever he would travel, because that was his custom, especially to go into a synagogue on Shabbat, on the Sabbath. But it says, you want to be seen of others, these hypocrites. Amen, I tell you, which means truly I tell you, Remember, amen means faithful and true are the words you've spoken. So he's saying, amen, faithful and true, I tell you that they have their reward in full. But you, when you pray, now he's talking to the disciple, go into your inner room. And when you go into your inner room, he says, shut the door and pray to your father in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you are praying, do not babble on like the pagans, For they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask. And so before I go into the specific areas of prayer, how to pray like a disciple, I want you to think about how you can shut the door. Shut the door to distraction. Shut the door to social media. Shut the door to TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, any interruption in your day. So before I go into the specifics of this prayer, I want you to think about how you can shut the door to distraction. And whatever it is, even if it's Twitter or now it's X, you know, and you're just looking at what other people are tweeting, just make sure that that's not interrupting your prayer time. So this is why David said, early in the morning will I seek you, because sometimes if you don't get started early, you'll find no time to pray in the latter part of your day. So the first thing I want you to do is stop all distractions for interrupting your prayer time. So if you make prayer a priority, it becomes your first response instead of your last resort. Because when you pray at the end of the day because something has gone wrong or all of a sudden bills are piling up, prayer becomes your last resort instead of your first response. But if you pray early in the morning, then it will be your first response and not your last resort. So I want you to shut the door, whatever it is. The second thing I want you to do is make prayer a priority. I mean, if you're going to pray like a disciple, be disciplined and just do like you do when you go to the gym. You don't want to get up in the morning. You don't want to kick yourself out of the bed. You don't want to leave before you've had your morning coffee. Something tells you that you need to sweat and you need to breathe and you need to walk and you need to run and you need to lift weights and whatever you do, maybe you swim. You know that once you do it, it feels good. Just like you'd push yourself to take care of your health. Why not push yourself to take care of your spiritual health and your mental health? Can you imagine the mental clarity and the spiritual discernment you're going to have if you make 2024 a year of obedience, a year of prayer, a year of overflow, a year of blessing, and a year of unstoppable growth? The only way you're going to grow as a disciple is that you make prayer a priority. And if you pray with this level of urgency and this level of discipline, the third thing that's going to happen is 
you're going to make prayer purposeful. That means with intentionality, you're going to have a purpose for prayer. So instead of just waiting for the doctor to say, you've been sick with this disease for months and you don't have much longer to live, instead of waiting for all the bills to pile up and now you're losing your home or losing your car to the repo man, don't allow prayer to be something you just do on the run when you're rushing to work. Don't allow prayer to be something you do just in a moment's notice when you need to get a good grade on a test or you need to go for that interview and qualify for that job. What if you were intentional in your prayer life and you didn't wait to the last minute to pray? You actually make it a priority. You make it a purposeful and intentional conversation with your Heavenly Father. One of the ways I do that is through my prayer walk because I really believe prayer with exercise and getting that breath in your lungs creates more capacity for you to praise the Lord after you finish praying because the Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. So whether it's a good day or a bad day, at least if it's a sunny day, even if it's a cold day, Find a place to pray where you can not only avoid distractions by shutting the door, maybe you make a place in your house, a prayer room, where you can have that prayer closet experience, that secret place of the Most High. But make sure you pray with purpose. And lastly, number four, pray with passion. That means don't pray wimpy prayers like, oh God, I wish this and I wish that. That's hoping, but that's not the same as faith. And actually, hope is much stronger than a wish. Hope is a great expectation that something good is about to happen. And when you have hope, it should lead to faith. Faith is the passion that says, God's in control. I'm going to release this problem to him. I'm going to talk to God about it, and he's going to give me wisdom. So today, make sure you shut the door to distraction. You're going to pray with priority and be disciplined in your prayer time. You're going to make prayer a purposeful time of intention. And lastly, pray with passion. All right, guys, get ready for our next one because we're going to do another episode just like this. It's going to be an extra bonus episode on this one, kind of a part two. And this is going to be, again, how to pray like a disciple. I want to even explain more of the things that I've learned over my lifetime on how to not only be dusty from the dust of the rabbi, Rabbi Yeshua, how to pray like a disciple maker should teach his disciples how to pray, how a rabbi teaches his Talmidim how to pray. I want you to be so focused this year that 2024 is a life of excellence without excuses. So let's make no excuse to keep listening to this podcast, keep chiming in, finding out how you can better grow and spiritually develop this year, and most importantly, how you can pray like a disciple. See you soon. We love you. Lehitrot. See you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, follow us for more episodes as you rate and review the podcast. Thank you for listening to the Dust of the Rabbi podcast with Rabbi Brian Baruch Belechi. Shalom. Lehitrot. See you next time.